So the next talk is uh, on massively parallel algorithm for small subgraph counting, uh, given by Point Quan. Well, I guess I, I'm used to yelling, so I guess uh, <laughs> so. I guess I didn't even notice that the mic wasn't on. Um, but yeah, so as I mentioned, I will be talking about the MPC model. So I'm going to uh, first uh, motivate it again, really quickly. Um, so the MPC model is a model over uh, clusters of multiple machines. Uh, the machines can talk to each other via rounds of communication. Um, and each machine has limited space. So this is where sublinear space comes in. Uh, generally, you assume that for graph problems, the space per machine is smaller than the number of edges in the graph. Um, but even better, you want the space, you want to be able to handle inputs where the space per machine is smaller than the uh, number of nodes in the graph. So Google, uh, Google Kubernetes engine is an example of an architecture that falls under this model. Uh, so Google Kubernetes is a front end that helps you manage multiple machines within a cluster. And of course, there's a various other frameworks uh, that fall under this MPC model, some of which are shown here. So we're all theorists, so um, practical applications may not motivate us that much. Um, so here are some theoretical motivation for this model. So within the past three years, you can see there's a large number of works on various graph problems in this model, um, some of which are shown here, and a, a lot of this work is done by people um, from this community and who might be sitting here today and also on, who might be sitting on Zoom. Um, so hopefully by now, um, from the past three minutes, I've motivated this model enough so that you're interested in it. So I'm going to go ahead and define the model. And so this model, uh, we consider M machines and the machines communicate each with each other over synchronous rounds. So here are some machines um, and given graph input, we the, we can assume that the graph input is partitioned in some reasonable way um, in the machines. Um, it's not, uh, so we definitely do not assume that uh, the graph is partitioned such that each vertex is in the same machine as its adjacency list. But we do assume that the, it is partitioned in some reasonable way so that each machine can access nodes and edges and know where they are in the clusters. So each machine has S space in words, and in each round, each machine first performs computation locally. Uh, within the model, we can assume they have unbounded computation time, but usually most reasonable uh, algorithms won't use more than poly S uh, time to compute their um, solutions. So at the end of each round, the machines exchange messages with, with each other to inform the computation for the next round. Um, one thing I wanna point out here is that the machines do not communicate more bits than what is allowed by the memory per machine, nor do they receive more bits than uh, what's allowed by S. Um, and usually we also care about the total space used by all the machines. Uh, by definition of these parameters, the total space is just M times S. Actually, the three parameters we usually talk about when we are talking about this model is space per machine, number of rounds, and total space. So I actually wouldn't be, I actually won't be using this big M here uh, past the slide. So I'll just be talking about the three um, quantities I just talked, I just said. So there are three domains um, in the MPC model that people care about. And these three domains are partitioned according to how much memory is allowed per machine. So there is the strongly sublinear memory. And um, according to the purpose of this workshop, this is a domain that's of the most interest um, to everyone. Um, and it's also the hardest to obtain efficient algorithms for. So uh, for strongly sublinear memory, you have space per machine equals n to the delta for some constant delta in zero one. There's also the linear memory um, domain, 
where the memory per machine is near linear in the number of nodes in your input up to some polylog factors. And finally, there is a strongly superlinear memory domain in which uh, the memory is n to the one plus delta for some constant delta greater than zero. So in all of these domains, what you want in terms of number of rounds is you want O of log log n rounds, or even better, you want constant number of rounds. And finally, as I mentioned before, you want the total memory to be also near linear in the size of your input, where for graph inputs, it's n plus m, where n is number of vertices and m is number of edges. Um, and I just want to briefly note that again, in all of these domains, you assume that uh, the, uh, the memory per machine is still sublinear in the number of edges in the input. Otherwise, you can put the entire graph on one machine and just run some centralized algorithm. Okay, so um, as I mentioned before, we're talking about small subwork counting. Actually, most of this talk will be focused on triangle counting. Um, and I will be talking about two different types of algorithms. First is the exact counting algorithm if in bounded arbitrary graphs, and I'll define what it is um, in a bit. And the other one is an approximation algorithm, so a one plus epsilon approximation algorithm. Um, so the first one uh, algorithm I just mentioned is for bounded arbitrary graphs. So arbitrary, really quickly for anybody who hasn't heard of this before is the number of force that the edges in the graph can be partitioned into. Um, intuitively, you can think of the arboricity as a measure of the sparsity of a graph. And generally, um, well, theorists like to say that for real world graphs, um, arboricity generally is polylog n. And I think well, we ran some experiments, this is generally true, arboricity is generally pretty small compared to the number of edges in the graph. Um, so in this exact setting, uh, the best exact algorithms for triangle counting are by Suri and Vesovitsky, uh, Chu and Chen. Um, so those two are the first two algorithms there. We also include this folklore algorithm, which we actually attribute to Chiba and Nishiseki, just because um, the centralized algorithm by Chiba and Nishiseki, we just took the most straightforward uh, conversion into MPC. So we just named this a folklore algorithm. Um, so it, usually for MPC, for a lot of these algorithms, you see trade-offs between you get better results for some of these qualities uh, while sacrificing uh, some of these other qualities. So um, this is the case for us. So we get better, better results for some of these three qualities and while sacrificing a little bit for the other quality. Um, so let me just compare our result at the bottom with these other results. So compared with SV, we get better space per machine and better total space when the arboricity is less than or equal to m to the one half minus epsilon for any constant epsilon greater than zero. So arboricity, we can bound by square root of m. So arboricity is equal to square root of m when you have near cliques. So if your entire graph is a near clique, you're at this worst case when alpha alpha uh, square root of m. But for most real world graphs, you never get to that case. Um, so in general, uh, we get better space per machine and also total space. Um, but we sacrifice a little bit on the number of rounds. So instead of one round, we use O of log log n rounds. Um, and compared to uh, CC, we get better number of rounds and space per machine, um, but the total space is worse when um, the arboricity is omega of one. So when the arboricity is super constant. But recall I said, we generally assume arboricity is polylog n. So um, also not, not that much of an increase in total space if you assume that. And finally, uh, for the folklore algorithm, uh, we get a smaller number of rounds, uh, but worse space per machine when alpha is less than, is actually when alpha is less than n to the one half. Um, but generally, uh, in that case, um, in the real world, generally, you have enough space in your machine such that you can model it as n to the delta for any delta greater than zero. Um, but in terms of the theoretical bounds, uh, we're slightly worse here. 
um, and as I mentioned before, um, we are operating the strictly sublinear setting. And here's our result uh, for the one plus epsilon approximation setting. Uh, for this result, we have to add another parameter, which is a, a lower bound on the number of triangles in order to get our one plus epsilon approximation. Um, so you can see at the rightmost column, this is the lower bounds. Um, and the best known results were by Pak and Sorokakis and Seshardri, Pinar, and Koda, and both from about a decade ago. So compared a, against the previous results, we improve on the lower bound on the number of triangles quadratically. So we show a square root of d average, or d average is the average degree in the graph. Um, and the previous best lower bound was um, just d average. Um, but we achieve slightly worse total space. So I wanna um, make a note about this total space here. So we actually get m times log n total space. And the log n is from amplifying our probability from constant probability of success of getting a one plus epsilon approximation to high probability of success. So if you only want constant probability, we can get rid of the log n in our total space here. Um, so comparing more specifically, uh, so compared to SPK, we get uh, worse space per machine because we're in the near linear space regime, whereas they are in the um, uh, sub super uh, sublinear space domain. Um, so actually, this would be the first thing to look at if you're looking for uh, to improve our result is to try to get our result into the sublinear space domain. Um, and compared to PD12, we get better space per machine uh, when n equals little of this quantity here. So this quantity is m times delta e divided by t. Delta e is defined to, the max, to be the maximum number of triangles that share an edge, and t is the number of triangles in the graph. Um, so what this essentially says is that PT12 uh, gets better space when you have a lot of triangles, uh, but not a lot of these triangles share an edge. Um, and we do better if there's a, if a lot of these triangles share edge. Um, and just to give some uh, example of how this could happen, suppose you have the Twitter follower graph. Uh, two influential celebrities might have a lot of followers and they might follow each other. So in that case, um, a lot of triangles will, will share an edge. Okay, so um, here is an entire summary of everything I'll talk about in this talk, as well as most of everything that's in our paper. Um, so I'll talk about the exact triangle counting algorithm. Actually, I'll talk about most of the analysis for this algorithm also. I'll also talk about our approximate triangle counting algorithm, um, but this will be very brief. And uh, additional results in our paper are we can turn all these algorithms into algorithms for clique counting. So you can convert this uh, exact triangle counting algorithm to a strongly, a strongly sublinear memory algorithm for clique counting. And this only increases the total space we use by some additional factors of alpha. You can turn this near linear memory algorithm, and that's also supposed to be near linear memory. You can turn this into an algorithm for clique counting uh, by increasing the lower bound on the number of triangles, also by some factors of alpha. And um, we were able to adapt a, a new result that showed up in ITCS um, for uh, counting all small subgraphs of size as most five. So we were able to adapt this to the MPC model. And finally, we had some simulations on real world graphs for the number of rounds and the approximation factor of our algorithm. But unfortunately, I can't talk about everything on the right. So um, I'm gonna start with talking about the exact triangle counting algorithm. As I mentioned before, this is for bounded arboricity graphs. And this is our entire formal theorem statement. Um, so I will just talk first about this um, standard triangle al counting algorithm that we just directly took from Chiba Nishiseki and put it into the MPC model. Um, so notice again, this has worse number of rounds and also worse space when alpha um, is close to square root of M. 
Okay, so um, this will be relatively quick because it will be a, it's just a warm up. Uh, but this is standard simple algorithm is you have some cutoff that is two alpha. And each round, you take all the nodes with degree at most two alpha, count the number of triangles adjacent to them, and then remove them from the graph and repeat with a cutoff of two alpha. So let's take a look at this example. Uh, this, for this example, alpha equals two. I think it is actually two, but you have to trust me here. Um, so you set the cutoff to four in this example. So all the uh, blue vertices, have a degree at most four. So I'll take them and I'll put them into machines. So the way I put them into machines out is I'll take a node and I'll put its one half neighborhood as well as its node into one machine. So in this example, I've shown all the vertices that are part of triangles, but of course, for the rest of the vertices that are not part of triangles, you'll, you'll also put them into a machine. So um, after you put them into a machine, each machine counts the number of triangles in that machine and increments a global count um, in the center there. And then after you count the triangles within the machines, you remove the nodes and you proceed and do it again. So you have to account for some duplication, but I won't talk about the details of how to deal with duplicates um, in this presentation. So really quickly, why does this give you all of log n rounds? So first, it, we can bound the maximum number of edges in any graph with arboricity alpha by n alpha. Um, so this is just a property of arboricity. Um, there's also a simple proof for this. Um, so what happens after the first round? After the first round, you removed all the vertices uh, with degree at most four alpha, actually, the denominator there is supposed to be four alpha. Uh, sorry about the typo. Um, so you uh, removed everything um, below that degree. So what happens is all the remaining vertices have a most uh, four alpha degree left. So if you take the number of edges and you divide it by four alpha, that gives you n over four. Um, so that means the number of vertices after your first round decreases by a factor of one over four, which means that after log n rounds, you'll have no vertices left. So that is uh, the proof, that is all the proof for the number of rounds needed by this simple algorithm. Now, the amount of space per machine that you need is alpha squared because you're taking a node and is one hop neighborhood and you're putting it into the machine. So the um, alpha squared is the maximum, well, O of alpha squared is the maximum number of triangles that this particular node will be incident to. And finally, um, the total space is O of M alpha. So the way you do this calculation is that each edge is adjacent to two endpoints. Each of those endpoints have degree alpha. Um, and when you remove a node, you'll remove its adjacent edge. So in total, um, you make at most M alpha of these copies when you remove the node. So that's it. Um, that's all of the analysis for this algorithm. So using this intuition, let's see how we can get log log n rounds instead of log, log rounds. And the main way we get the log log n rounds is we increase the cutoff doubly exponentially. So instead of setting the cutoff to be some constant factor times alpha and using that cutoff every round, we instead set the cutoff to two to the three halves to the i times two alpha. So you can see i is the round that we're on. So if you progress to more and more rounds, this cutoff will increase doubly exponentially. So let's run through an example of this algorithm. Uh, the rest of the algorithm uh, intuitively stays the same, but I'll, I'll specifically talk about how to count the triangles um, later to get the sublinear space. So just assuming everything else stays the same for now, we use this cutoff running this algorithm. In the first round, the cutoff is four alpha. So we take all the vertices with degree at most uh, four alpha, remove them, 
count the number of triangles incident to them. Then we increase this cutoff according to um, the formula I just showed on the previous slide. And then you take these vertices, remove them, add the number of triangles incident to them, and then you proceed until your graph is empty. So because the cutoff increases doubly exponentially, your number of rounds is O of log log n. Okay, so that, um, so that basically proves your number of rounds. Now we have to show two additional things. The first thing is that uh, the total space used is O of M alpha. And the second thing is of course, uh, the sublinear space. So I'll show the first, which is the total space used is bounded by M alpha. So suppose um, after your first round, so we're gonna show this using induction. So I'm gonna show the first round first. So suppose after your first round, you have X vertices left. Um, then uh, let's bound the number of edges in the graph originally in terms of the number of vertices you, had, you have left after the first round. Um, so after the first round, your cutoff was four, four times alpha. So the number of edges left after your first round is X times four alpha. That gives you the sum of the degrees. Divided by two gives you the number of edges. So M is lower bounded by two alpha X. It, suppose M1 is the number of edges you have left after the first round. You can upper bound it by X times alpha um, just by using the fact that the number of edges in the graph with arborescent alpha is just number of nodes times alpha. So given the lower bound and the upper bound, you can combine them to get M1 is less than or equal to M over two. So that's only for the first round. So now we do our inductive step. So we wanna find out after the i round what happens. So you can replace M with M to M uh, sub I minus one for the previous round. Uh, you replace the cutoff for alpha with your actual cutoff from the previous round, which is two to the three halves to the I minus one times two alpha. And you replace this M1 with the number of edges uh, in round MI. So combining the, them again, you get a bound on MI in terms of M and a, your doubly exponential factor at the bottom. So to get a, the space per machine, it would be MI times the, uh, the bound on your, um, a, on your degree when you remove the node. So that's what's shown on the left. So MI times your cutoff. And then you can substitute this, this expression you got for MI and just do some simple uh, simplification to get the bound of 2M alpha. So that proves that the total space you use is O of M alpha. So now uh, the last thing we gotta show is that um, you need space per machine is sublinear. And to do this, we reduce the problem of counting uh, the number of triangles adjacent to each vertex you remove to sorting uh, and merging some number of lists of elements and counting the duplicates in the merged list of elements. So how do you get these lists? You get these lists by saying every removed node sends its adjacency list to its neighbors. Then the neighbor which receives the adjacency lists mer merges the received lists with its own adjacency list and then counts the duplicates in this merge list. So here's a quick pictorial example. C is a node you remove. You send its adjacency list to A, B, and D. So D receives uh, the adjacency list A, B, D. D then merges its adjacency list with the list it receives, sorts it, and then counts the number of duplicates. And the duplicates is the number of triangles. Um, again, you have to handle duplicate counting, but I won't talk about that detail here. Um, and once you reduce uh, that problem to the problem I just said, you can then use uh, some pretty standard MPC primitives to do the sorting and the counting of duplicates. So sorting, you just use um, the well-known primitive by Goodrich et al. And for finding duplicates, we have this new very simple uh, primitive 
uh, that also just uses standard MCC procedures. So just assume you have some list that's sorted and you split it up into several machines. You send the counts of the ends to the next level of machines, and then you merge the counts of the ends and you do that again until it, you've merged all the machines counts of the ends. And basically this tells you um, the counts of all the elements if you propagate this count again to the bottom. Um, and the number of rounds is just the height of this um, binary tree of mergers you create. So this will be uh, log S N. Recall that S in the um, sublinear space regime is N to the delta for some constant delta. So this will be just all of one round. And that's it. Um, this is basically the entire analysis for this algorithm. Um, and you get these uh, guarantees shown here. Uh, I just wanna quickly mention for those of you who are familiar with the round compression technique. So this somewhat, um, resembles round compression, but uh, not quite. This is uh, simpler and also deterministic. So for round compression, for those of you who are familiar with it, basically subsample some number of vertices into machines and does some uh, processing of those vertices. But we don't need to do that. Um, this procedure is completely deterministic for us. Okay, so um, I have a few minutes left or, or rather I don't have any minutes left, but um, I'll, just, I'll just spend a very quick uh, one to two minutes discussing this last part, uh, which is the approximation algorithm. Uh, so the main advantage is uh, approximation algorithms, smaller runtime, they're fast, requires less space most of the time, uh, but the main event, disadvantage is that it requires some lower bound on the number of triangles in your graph in order to get a good approximation. Um, so here is our formal theorem. I just want to mention that the previous best lower bound is the average degree in the graph. But again, there's a different algorithm that gets better uh, space per machine um, compared to a, our linear space per machine. So this previous algorithm gets sublinear space per machine. Um, so uh, this algorithm is very intuitive, um, but the analysis is a little bit more tricky. So what you do for this algorithm is that you have some number of machines, you have an input graph, you put each node into a machine with some probability P. So that means that a node can go into different machines. So we're not doing a partitioning of the graph. Uh, we're doing sampling with replacement. So this sampling with replacement part is very important for getting the better lower bound. Um, so after you put these nodes into the machine, then you count the number of triangles within each machine. And then you use it as an estimator. Uh, and to get the high probability bound, you do this process O of log n times with O of log n um, separate uh, seeds of randomness. Um, and you don't do it O of log n times synchronously because that doesn't give you O of one round. You do this using O of log n factor additional space. So you can do this in parallel. Um, and then you use the median trick to get the actual approximation on the number of triangles. So really quickly, some number of challenges. And the first thing is, of course, we need to make sure the induced subgraphs um, do not exceed the space per machine. The second thing is a bit tricky, which is how do you co actually compute the induced subgraph in each machine uh, when one vertex can appear in multiple machines? So this problem is actually easy if you need to put the vertex on one machine, because then you can just send it to that machine. But if you need to um, put it on multiple machines, it, Computing induced subgraph, you can't just uh, compute all pairs of vertices in the machines because that would take uh, omega of n squared total space. Um, so we have to do something a little bit uh, more than just computing the subgraph by querying all pairs. And um, finally, you have to make sure the number of triangles across the machines concentrates. So the first, you just carefully set P so such that your expected number of uh, edges in a machine doesn't exceed the space. For the second, you have to use k-wise independent hash functions for some small k um, to, to send 
the vertices to each machine, um, and as well as the edges to each machine. And the third is um, you calculate constant probability of success using Chebyshev's uh, because you have k-wise independence. Um, so you can assume that k is at least two. So you have pairwise independence. So you can use Chebyshev's to, ca uh, to calculate constant probability of success. And then you use the median trick to amplify your probability. So actually, this concludes all the technical portions of the talk. Um, I'll just conclude with some uh, open questions. And the main, uh, so this slide only contains three open questions. There's more open questions in the paper if you're curious. Um, and one of the open questions is we give a small subgraph counting for subgraphs of size at most five. Can we extend this to all subgraphs, which in the centralized model can be counted in near linear time? So some recent works have shown um, and exact separation between subgraphs that can be counted in near linear time and those that can't. Um, but they use what's called a DAG tree decomposition to get to the algorithmic result for counting these small subgraphs. And turns out DAG tree decomposition is kind of hard to make work in small number of rounds in MPC. So this is an open question that we pose. Um, another open question is, uh, if you consider the adaptive MPC model, um, which you heard about this morning, uh, can you get better number of rounds or better space per machine for triangle counting? Um, recall for approximate triangle counting, one of the issues was we need to be able to send um, edges to the machines they're supposed to be on. But if you have a shared distributed hash table, maybe, maybe that problem could be much easily solved. Um, and maybe that could live, lead to better results. And finally, uh, if you're considering sparse graphs, when M is O tilde of N, a, a important question is asking whether approximate triangle counting in O of one round can happen in sublinear space. So this was actually posed by one of our anonymous reviewers. Um, so thank you, whoever that was. Um, notice that this is, a, this is trivial in the near linear space regime because for sparse graphs, you can just put the entire graph on one machine and solve it. So this question is only um, interesting in the strictly sublinear space. So that's it. Um, thanks everybody for coming. Um, happy to take questions or talk offline. Any questions? So do, do you think it's possible that you could get O of one rounds for, um, for exact triangle counting by, so the arboricity is connected to orientations Yes. Like right, you can basically exactly. just orient the edges from lower degree to higher yeah, exactly. degree, which you could do in one round or maybe constant rounds. And yeah. then you just have mm -hmm. to enumerate all pairs of out neighbors and check if they're a triangle. Yeah. So um, the one thing, the one thing about that is uh, the, the space per machine. Um, not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how to do that is sub uh, linear space per machine. Um, because you kind of, you have to make sure your number of queries for the pairs is not too much. Um, yeah, so I don't know how to generate this, these queries for all the pairs on one machine. And if you do it across machines, they'll blow up your number of rounds, essentially. Um, yeah, but I think if we do, if we think about this more, I think it's an interesting direction. Yeah. All right, more questions? All right, if there is no more questions, let's thank Guan Quan again. And